Hi, welcome to the next of our series of mini lectures as we give it, begin to wrap up uh, looking at how we design an optical system, in particular a zoom lens. Um, we've gone through a lot of things this semester. We've come up with models of how light behaves. Uh, we've understood how devices, in particular lenses, work that allow us to manipulate light. And we've come up with a mathematical model where we can understand how a zoom lens works by looking at the magnification and image position as we move a lens in the system and see that what zoom means is the magnification changes while the image position remains constant. Uh, we've s developed several uh, mathematical models that allow us to predict the performance of a zoom lens. And we've looked at aberrations, which is why these models, many of them, are based on an ideal lens in the paraxial approximation. and and don't really work that well to let us know exactly how the lens is going to behave. And today we're here on the last one, which is to be able to measure the performance of an imaging system. Last time we talked about the point spread function, which is a nice theoretical calculation, but doesn't really lend itself so much to measurements in the laboratory because you need to have an ideal point source to measure a point spread function. So let's look at one of the figures like we had last time and consider uh, two points of light. But in this case, instead of points of light, we're going to consider sort of horizontal bars of light. These are perfectly legitimate objects in the imaging system. We just don't see it in a lot of books because they're kind of, of hard to, to draw. And what we learned last time with point spread function was that diffraction and aberrations in the system mean that as these points of light uh, are very close together. This distance d between them is small. Uh, they're not resolved by the imaging system. The two individual sort of distributions of light at the image plane merge to form one big peak. As the distance d increases and these, these things are moved a little bit further apart, we get to the point where they're just resolved, where there's a little dip in the intensity distribution on the image plane. And as they move still further, uh, part, they become fully resolved, and you can see sort of two clear points of light. Let's take a look at, at what these curves mean in a little bit more detail, because this leads us into the idea of modulation transfer function. Um, so it's pretty obvious that what we're plotting in the vertical direction here is the intensity or brightness of the light. Um, and we use the signal I for intensity many times. And so down here on the bottom of the curve, uh, we have blackness. We have no light while up here at the top of the curve, we have a white color representing a lot of light. Um, we can also look at what this might look like, considering that we have, let me go ahead and erase this for clarity, since we have a line of light here as our object, and correspondingly a line of light here as our image, let's see what this image would look like for the case where the two points are close together and they're unresolved. In this case, we have essentially a line, black here, uh, becoming shades of gray, white at the top, and then going back down following this Gaussian curve. As we move our two points or lines further apart uh, to the just resolved case, we see black out here going up to the peak, which is white, a little dip of grayness where it's not quite black and not quite white in between here, then shading over to white and again to black. And of course, when we're fully resolved, we go from black to white to black to white to black again. And so we can take this idea and create a physical device, a target, if you will, which we can look at to determine how good the resolution of our imaging system is. And the targets that are usually used for this are simply periods of, of black and white lines where one period, and let's go ahead and use capital T for the period of this, is defined, uh, oops, excuse me, I've got that wrong. Let's define our period as going from that edge to that edge. And there's one period of our target. And this period here gets smaller and smaller as the lines get closer together. And what we might expect to see with an aberrated or imperfect imaging system is for very large periods, the lines are very well defined. As the lines become closer and closer together, they start to blur a little bit. And as the lines get very close together, they gray out. And it's hard to see that there are lines there at all. And certainly, if I move the lines still closer together, all I might see is a gray blur. And this is the idea of modulation transfer function. 
And in fact, you've probably seen a lot of targets like this one, which is an Air Force test target, which are used to measure optical systems based on this idea. So let's look at modulation transfer function in a little bit more detail so we can understand it. It turns out that modulation transfer function is a good compromise between a theoretical technique and one that's actually fairly easy to implement in the laboratory. There's a long and large theoretical base to how modulation transfer function works. It's well beyond the scope of this class, which we're going to skip today, and really give you an idea of what MTF is and how to use it. So again, we have the idea that we have different periods of bars, black and white, 50% duty cycle here, and as the bars become closer together, the image starts to become more and more blurry, and if you will, the contrast decreases. Uh, we define the modulation to be the maximum intensity minus the minimum intensity divided by essentially the max plus the minimum. So in the case that on an object, for example, your minimum intensity is zero where it's black and your maximum intensity is one where it's completely white, your modulation would be basically one divided by one and the modulation is defined to be 1 in this case. And that's a perfect system, one that has perfect imaging. Um, however, as the bars become a little bit closer together and the black areas are not quite so black and the white areas are not perfectly white, you get to the case that's shown perhaps right here where your object goes from perfectly white at 1 and perfectly black at 0 to a value that's not quite white, maybe 0.8, and a value that's not quite black, maybe on the order of 0.2. In this case, the modulation is 0.6 divided by 1 equal 0.6. And the modulation is dropped from 1 to a smaller value. And you can see here, as the lines get closer and closer together, these bars corresponding to this case, that our modulation decreases even more, and in the case that there is no modulation, where it looks like a uniform shade of gray, the modulation drops to zero. You also notice that the modulation is a function of the spacing between the bars, and this leads us to the modulation transfer function, which is defined to be the actual image modulation divided by the ideal image modulation for a perfect imaging system neglecting diffraction as a function of lines per millimeter where this has many lines per millimeter and this has few lines per millimeter. So a modulation transfer function of a hypothetical system might look something like this. Notice that the vertical axis is the modulation transfer function, which will go from 0 to 1. And the horizontal axis is the spatial frequency. Um, we define the period as the spacing between the bars in millimeters, and the frequency is simply the inverse of the period in the same way we do it in the time domain. Uh, so let's take a look at an example here. For bars with a large period here, with good spacing, the image might look like this. Um, the white areas are almost completely white, the black areas are almost completely black, and our modulation transfer function here has a value near 1 because there's about 100% difference between the bottom and the top. However, as we get our bars close together, our spatial frequency becomes higher as the period gets smaller. Uh, you'll notice that we don't have an image that looks like perfectly black and white bars here anymore. Uh, the modulation is less than 100%, and you'll notice here our value may be on the order of 0.6 as we calculated above. And as the bars get still closer together, the image looks less and less con or has little and less and less contrast. The bars start to blur into a uniform gray. The modulation is much, much less than 100%, and so we're getting down to values around 0.2 here. And the imaging system gets worse and worse until we go to high enough frequencies, the modulation transfer function drops to zero. And so this is modulation transfer function, it's simply a graph where that represents the essentially contrast or modulation of the image compared to an ideal image. And um, this is very easy to measure if you have a, a black and white target with bars, as you've seen in our laboratory, and is a very good way to measure the performance of any optical system, and we'll do more of this in our in-class exercises.